Absolutely. Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, guys, I love y'all so much <laughs> that this week I faced down something extraordinarily difficult and painful just so you would not have to do the same. That's right, everyone. I watched the Mayor Pete documentary <laughs> so that you do not have to. Now, the first thing you should know about the Mayor Pete movie is that it is not a good movie at all. Listen, say what you will about Game Change, the Helper and Heilman blockbuster about the rise of Obama and about Sarah Palin. That thing was a fascinating read and made for a great movie, or perhaps a more apt comparison here, the documentary Mitt about Mitt Romney's presidential run was actually really interesting and quite revelatory in spite of the fact that the subject, much like Pete, was a kind of odd introvert not known for expressing a lot of emotion. In Mayor Pete, the filmmaker takes an emotionally inaccessible character in Pete Buttigieg and leaves the viewer right where they started with him, wondering if a real-life human being could possibly go through their entire life so calculated and so utterly detached. Pete doesn't warm to the filmmaker or his campaign staff or even seemingly his own husband, Chastin, leading to brutally impersonal, supposedly personal moments like this one. Cheers. Can we eat the ice cream before the chicken? We'll do whatever he wants. Eat that. Oh. Take that. Well, it's for sheer cold <laughs> indifference, though, I actually prefer another restaurant moment we can take a look at here. So after a long campaign day, Pete walks up to a table where Chasten is sitting with his head down on the table, totally despondent. Pete sits down, and rather than offer Chasten a kind word or the comfort of some gesture, maybe physical touch, instead just picks up his glass of water and cinnamon bun and gets to work eating with barely a look in his dejected husband's direction. And I swear I am not cherry picking here either. Pete's emotional distance from the action flummoxes his campaign staff as well. At one point, his comms director, Liz Smith, proclaims he's coming across like the effing Tin Man. At another, she reminds him that when he's talking about overcoming adversity as a gay man, he's not supposed to be cataloging societal tendencies like, quote, a effing anthropologist, but that, quote, this is like a thing that you feel. Now, this is another theme throughout the movie, which leans a lot on Pete's identity as a gay man. You see in real time the way that Pete and his staff set about crafting a biographical identity that might hold appeal for voters and that he might be able to pull off as authentic. Let me just say, I think this personal branding exercise type stuff is extremely common for most politicians. That doesn't make it any less gross, though. Early on in the film, Liz Smith suggests his campaign should be as much as possible about his personal bio. Quote, I really, really do think it's as much about his style and as about as much of who he is as a person as it is about, like, policy and all that stuff. And indeed, policy and all of that stuff doesn't figure into this film whatsoever. The stakes for voters on healthcare or college debt or really anything else, they're completely invisible in this film. Instead, Liz's analysis either proves prescient or she is able to manifest a purely biographical contest of identities through her impressive sheer force of will. Nearly every media clip obsesses over whether the nation is ready for a gay man or what it would mean for Pete to be the first gay man. Pete's failures with the black community is either because that community is just too homophobic to fairly judge Pete or possibly the result of Pete's identity being essentially trumped by the oppression faced by the black community. I guess it does make a kind of sense that if you argue that the main reason to vote for you is that people in your identity group have faced X levels of oppression, it does leave the door open for someone else to come in and say, well, my identity group faced X plus one levels of oppression. Now, of course, none of that explains why in the end, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden were the most appealing candidates to voters in general and minority voters in particular. You also get the sense that for all the talk in the film of how important it is for Pete to be authentically Pete, this leaning into identity and biography, it actually isn't authentically Pete at all. I think he was probably much more comfortable at McKinsey poring over spreadsheets of how to eke out an extra cent for the corporate bottom line, regardless of what human beings might suffer as a result, than he is trying to pretend that he has something emotionally compelling personally to offer to the nation. He lacked experience. His policy platform was anodyne at best and a laughable afterthought at worst, Medicare for those who want it comes to mind. So identity and biography... That was basically all they really had to work with. But Pete's heart is only half in it the entire time. When Chastin wants to know why he's the only spouse not on stage with the candidate after Iowa, for example, he's met with uncomfortable silence. 
We're going to be the only campaign that didn't have a spouse on the stage. Hmm? You're going to be the only candidate that didn't have your spouse standing next to you. I think you're going to come at the end because we don't have the like, supporters and family on. There's like a gap between. We were there for the council. Let, let me begin by stating that I imagine. Yeah, I'm coming at the end, but everyone, like, everyone has had their spouse standing next to them. The results will be announced. I knew something was like back among the. Right, he was so, on stage the whole time. Yeah. So was Joe. I have a good feeling we're going to be doing very, very well here. Right? Also, when Chaston suggests that Pete add language into a speech about how gay kids can look at this campaign and know that the door is open for them too, he's once again met with uncomfortable silence. At one point, Pete actually directly says to Chaston that this stuff, meaning gay identity and homophobia, seems to bother you a lot more than it bothers me. Now, if you were a Bernie supporter, there was also plenty to enrage you in this film. You watch the moment when Pete decides to shamelessly declare victory in Iowa in spite of there being basically no votes in to speak of. By the way, I had always suspected it was Liz Smith, who is an impressive operative with a killer instinct, who made that particular call. But even Liz was a little leery of Pete going out and claiming a win based on basically nothing. That call, it was all Pete. But by far the most disgusting part is when Pete makes his dropout decision post-South Carolina. Here's how he explained it, quote, We have a chance to do some good now. If it's true that too many candidates in this race are cluttering it, there's two things you can do. One of them is win, and the other is to get out. Now think about that. His idea of, quote, doing some good is to play his part to kneecap Bernie Sanders because, God forbid, the guy who wants everybody to get health care has a shot at winning. It's revealing, isn't it? The logic is never spelled out in the documentary. It's just assumed that everyone will understand it to be an inherent good to help the corrupt ghouls who run the Democratic Party remain at their posts. Now, Pete was smart enough to realize that if he wanted to keep his future safe in that party, he'd better fall in line sooner rather than later. Given that top Democratic donors are now holding secret meetings to plot how to push Pete ahead of Kamala in the line of succession, it would seem that that decision is being heavily rewarded. Bottom line, I'd say this film feels like a failed hagiography. To revere someone, you first have to care about them. There just isn't enough here to really care whether Pete succeeds or fails or becomes Secretary of Transportation. Just another unsuccessful media attempt to convince the public to embrace a political candidate, not because of what they might do for you, but because of what you might do for them. Ed Sager, after watching Pete, I had never watched that Mitt documentary. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.